108 Marketplace Ministry. We've gone to 10 lessons already, and today, lesson 11, we do deeper realms of kingdom entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, the science, the art, the business of creating business, creating something out of nothing. The whole idea is the Lord is trying to encourage his people to come to a place where we're just not employees, you know, under pharaohic masters and, you know, under Babylonian systems that entangle. Of course, not everybody will be an employer, not everybody will be an entrepreneur, but for those who are called in this realm, the Lord wants them to step out by faith. And there's nothing wrong in starting right where you are as a side hostel and growing it to the point where you become an entrepreneur fully standing that identity. And so today's lesson, we're just going to see what the Lord has for us and the one following. They're all important. In fact, from where we began Kingdom Economics, three lessons, then we came into Kingdom Entrepreneurship. There are certain things the Lord is unpacking for us that when we understand them, it will bring great deliverance. Let's pray. Father in heaven, have your way and glorify Yeshua. Cause us to understand this lesson. And those whom you are challenging to become kingdom entrepreneurs, may they receive it, may they walk in it, may they receive the blessing, and may they be a blessing to you, your kingdom, and to humanity. We give you praise in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. So, brothers and sisters, the body of Yeshua worldwide needs kingdom entrepreneurs to arise and take their place. As I said before, not everybody is called to this realm of ministry, but those who are called, they encourage to hear the voice of the Lord and step out in faith. If you don't step out of the boat, you may not be able to walk on water, even when the Lord has said, like he said to Peter, come. Peter began to come. Those who study this course diligently and sense a stirring of Holy Spirit in their heart can respond as it leads them. And this is not a call to pursue riches, bow to mammon, or stuff their lives with the good of this world. It is not a call to stack up money for generations unborn. And as the previous lessons made clear, the average saint is imbued with all it takes to succeed in the marketplace in a holistic, sustainable, and enduring manner. Then the question is, what has been lacking? Why is it that believers are not in the marketplace the way described in this course? There are three reasons. The first reason is a lack of a biblically sound, Holy Spirit-led conceptual understanding of the reality that Elohim prospers some members of his family so that he will use them to be instruments of caring for those who do not have as well as transform the environments, impact the environments in line with Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 29. The second reason is that a predominant wing of the holiness movement glorified poverty and lack as evidence of true righteousness to the degree that a lot of people felt guilty for, of, of being successful. And if the Lord blessed them with material blessings, they felt guilty because in the false prosper, the false holiness movement, it was it was projected that having some good, material good, financial good, amounts to backsliding. Number three, the false prosperity gospel did even worse because he fostered a debased version of wealth in the bid to escape from the terrible, you know, picture that the holiness movement painted, glorifying poverty. Some people rose, no, my God is not poor. And in the process, they just turn it into a gaudy, terrible spectacle of people chasing money, bowing to mammon, doing everything to get money. And so with these three, extremes. The body of Christ was not, has not been able to walk in the, a biblically sound theological exposition of what the Lord has made 
provisions he has made, the requirements he has made concerning success in the marketplace. What shall we do to change the equation? The three factor, factors above having combined, they create a cloud of confusion. And the answer to ignorance and confusion is always stood from the world that is rightly divided to provide clarity. Bible wants us to study to show ourselves approved unto Elohim, workmen that may not be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. Yeshua said in John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And so brothers and sisters, there is need for kingdom entrepreneurs who will consecrate their lives and businesses, be holy unto the Lord and submit to the living of the Holy Spirit as instruments of innovation who become solution providers as a mandate to change their world. For such people like that, the prince of this world, even Satan, will have nothing to accuse them, just as he had nothing to accuse Yeshua, as John, Yeshua said in John 14, 30, here and after, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh have nothing in me. So we need to say something. To detach from Babylon is a tax that must be done. And let me just give you a summary of some of the things you read in the teaching note. There are two main enemies of Israel in the Old Testament. They represent two types of tendencies. The one was Egypt. In Egypt, Israel was in bondage, but they had the benefit because of Joseph to have the land of Goshen. And they stayed in the land of Goshen, they reared their cattle, they practiced their faith, they had the liberty in Goshen. So they need to go from Goshen to Egypt proper to go and do the hard labor and come back at night. So when it was time for the exodus to take place, they were able to go without difficulty. In fact, before Egypt knew about it, they are already far gone, so to say, towards the Red Sea. But there was another enemy called Babylon. And Babylon was a different cup of tea. What was it about Babylon that was very insidious? In Babylon, they didn't have the luxury of living apart from the people. You know what happened? In Babylon, they gave them Babylonian names like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They gave them Babylonian food so that they, over time they'll change. There'll be a change in the internals of their lives and they'll begin to think like Babylon. They begin to behave like Babylonians. So that is what they call the principle of assimilation. And so the church has been in captivity to Babylon. Babylon is the predominant thing you can know about the church today. The church thinks like, acts like, speaks like the world. And the world also acts like, speaks like the church. So the church is getting worldly and the world is getting more, more, uh, the world is getting more churchy. So you see that in gospel music. You don't know the difference. I came from a background, one of my main business was show business. Before the Lord, you know, met me on that wonderful day, April 1, 1988. You know what? It was a show business. that I made what they call make a name popular, all that kind of stuff. I understand the, well, I understand the power of music. And so that you do rock and roll and just put Jesus' name there, or you do rap and put the name of Jesus and some Christianese does not change the fact that it is rock and roll or rap. And you know what? That's Babylon for you. The church has gone worldly, and the world has gone churchy. So there's a mixture. And brothers and sisters, this mixture has a purpose. Right from the fourth century, when the church and the, and the Roman Empire married, you can marry a woman whose husband is alive. You have to kick him out. And so Rome literally chucked out Yeshua, if you will use that phrase, to marry his wife forcefully from the year 310 AD when the Edict of Toleration was signed in the northern Italian city of Milan by Emperor Constantine and Emperor Lysias News, all the way till 381 AD, when under Emperor Theodosius I in the city of Thessaloniki, in the area called Greece and Macedonia today, 
the decree was finally signed, the marriage, the union, and it had a purpose. All the days the Lord has, 27 years now, he's had me being on the watch out for the end of the age. One thing I've now understood is that the purpose of creating religion that is worldly and the world, allowing the world to be churchy, is to truly confuse believers and the world as to time. So people will not know. And this religion that is worldly, that grabs the world and the world grabs it, will produce the Antichrist, will produce the false prophet. And brothers and sisters, watch that space because we are getting towards that time. And listen, the whole idea is to make the world, the church world will not know when they'll bow. I mean, will not resist bowing. The image that the false prophet will ask people to bow to. Read Revelation chapter 13 and 14 to see the danger ahead. We are getting close to the end of the age. But the Lord then has a message for his church. And that message is in Revelation 18. He said, come out from among them and, you know, come out from Babylon. Come out. We need to begin to have people who radically live according to the kingdom principles. Nothing of the world is found in them. They are business people, no bribery, no, no extortion, no uh, giving people uh, uh, products that are less than standard, no engagement in false marketing, false promotion, in projecting human beings for people to come and see. No, all those things will be out. They will do kingdom business by kingdom principles. They'll be holy unto the Lord. They'll be disciples of the Lord right there in the marketplace where they are. Now is the time for the kingdom church to decouple from the ungodly and spiritually corrosive worldly economic systems that are based on self-centeredness, selfishness, and using cheap labor who are paid starvation wages to generate untold wealth for the 1% of the world to live in our extreme luxury. The system has produced a tiny band of low cost who use state capture models. Go to Africa today, the leading nations of Africa. What has bedraggled them? Corruption of an extreme demonic type where state capture, somebody can capture state government and divert 20% of the resources to personal pocket. Divert national resources to personal uh, uh, pocket. Why? It is because that system of the world is corrosive. It leads to poverty, systemic poverty. Men and brethren, the Lord prayed for us in John 17, prayed to the Father. That there we are in the world, we are not of the world. We are not supposed to be ruled by what rules the world. And we need to come out, brothers and sisters, it's doable. It's doable. I didn't know what I know now, but I know that I run business and built it up to a considerable level. And certain principles undergather what we did by the grace of the Lord. And I thank the Lord because of the uh, spiritual environment, the discipleship. And all the word that we received in those days, we did business and grew it to stretch them where we did business with governments and local governments, state governments, did with corporations, and by his grace, we didn't have to bribe anybody. We didn't have to do any kick forward or kick backward, even in the largest of all the businesses that were done in those days. So, men and brethren, the Lord has a mandate for kingdom entrepreneurs and their enterprises. Number one, to be instruments through which the original dominion mandate of mankind is recovered and practiced, as said in Genesis 1, 26 to 29, Genesis 2, 15, 1, 1, 5, 16, Galatians 3, 13, and 14, Colossians 1, 12 to 14, Colossians 2, 11 to 15, why? Because they are new creatures. 7 Corinthians 5, 17. All things are passed away. They become new. So Colossians 2, 6 to 10 and verse 10 says, And you 
are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power, the kingdom entrepreneur who knows his God is, you know what, is complete in Yeshua. This is important. So that's why, number two, there are to be channels through which Elohim supplies all the needs of all these things, including those who have nothing at all. The church needs to have very strong social and economic safety nets at the congregational city and global levels. You know, Second Corinthians 8 tells us a lot all the way to verse 15 about the principle. He, it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. That's the plan of the Lord. Not five fingers are not equal. Nothing. Some people will not be rich. Yeshua himself said it in John 17. The poor you have always with you. And yet the Lord is their creator. The Lord is their redeemer. And the father is their father. So how does he supply their needs? It's through those he blesses in outstanding ways. And so we need to understand that's what sustained the church, the early church. Acts 2, 41 to 47. Acts 4, 33 to 37. And then Acts 6, 1 to 7. And we need to know that once these things are in place, then it's easy for Elohim's people to, be, to fulfill the purpose of the Lord for their lives. Their body is healed. You know, there are some case studies at the International Minister's Fellowship. This principle was, has been pursued through the Brother Law of Continued Campaign. Now it's in its second year, and some brethren in the Western world, USA, UK, Ireland, and Italy, have been engaged in supporting some brethren in the third world, you know, quarterly. At least it's a starting point. And it's happened now by this December, two years gone. And we thank the Lord for that. Since 2016, the Global Missions Board has been caring for orphanages and orphans and widows and widowed organizations in some selected countries. And we thank the Lord for what it has done. And for the past few years, there's been an experiment. What will happen if you put some attention in a community and do certain things that will cause that community to experience the love of Elohim? Not from a religious perspective, not from churchy perspective, carrying the Bible in the heart, but in the, in the head, but carrying it in the heart, the love of Elohim. What we've seen encourages us to know that it's doable. And there's a plan to run it across Africa. And there's also a plan to challenge brethren in different nations of Africa, first and later Asia, to get into cooperatives, become cooperatives, identify things to be. It could be just to produce cups. It just could be to just do water. It could be to do snails or whatever, but do it together. We are better together. And if we get them, then let some brethren and ministries and families in the Western world support them with capital to start that business, which is sustainable. These things are doable, brothers and sisters, and we are trusting the Lord that he will stir the heart of many brethren to get involved. They're not going to give. In fact, the, the gold standard is you don't give anything to the body to give for you. The gold standard is one a project is identified somewhere in the continent, and the person or ministry will give straight to them so that you can monitor their progress and how they are doing. We have four projects that are experimental, in three nations, and we're checking out how they're doing so that by the grace of the Lord, we, we will be able to reflect back to see how far the Lord has brought us. Not so it's a heart matter. Once your heart is inclined to be an extended hand of Elohim to touch the life of people, you can do it. So the third thing that kingdom entrepreneurs should do is employ faith, prayer, spiritual warfare, wisdom, and great grace and patience for research, breakthrough, they will create innovative products and services which affect people in the locality and in different parts of the world that use the products. In other words, the Lord will show them what to do to break new grounds and go beyond borders. Number four, kingdom entrepreneurs who embrace these principles will create kingdom business models that run entirely on biblical principles. 
so that the world may see and be drawn to the glorious light of the king and his gospel in civil society and in the marketplace. Can you picture these developments? 4.1. Be an employer of labor. Ensuring that a large pool of unemployed saints, as well as unbelievers in specific localities, who need to encounter a totally different world, which points them to Yeshua. They become employees, they become part of a culture that shows the reality that Yeshua is alive. 4.2, operate with an excellent human resource management concept, which places high value on lives of employees, treat them well, create family-friendly environments full of love, righteousness, peace, and joy. Create an environment that will touch. 4.3, display holiness in the marketplace as only Elohim honoring policies and practices are implemented. There will be no price gouging, no deceptive advertising or false claims. 4.4, prayer will be an intrinsic part of daily corporate life, including time of morning devotionals, break, and before departure, a short prayer session. 4.5, the gifts of Holy Spirit will be freely embraced. Direction will be received through prophetic releases, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment, dreams, visual interpretation. Those in the healthcare industry, such as hospitals and medical office, will embrace healing, the gift of healing, and working of miracle and deliverance. They will, they will also do all these with the hearts full of compassion and mercy. They make the difference. When I attend a, a healthcare facility run by a kingdom entrepreneur in this way, even the atmosphere will bring real healing before you even, you know, receive the physical healing. The environment alone is so pure, so clean. 4.6, kingdom businesses will tie it consciously into conditions and ministries that are connected with, you know, in the locality or where the Lord leads them. Generous donations will be made annually to various ministries they are connected with, including missionary projects they sponsor. Staff will also be encouraged to drop their regular change into offering boxes located across the business site for care of orphanages and orphans and people who are less privileged in the community or elsewhere. 4.7 Kingdom businesses will also engage in corporate social responsibility towards their host communities from their gross profits. Before the net is declared, things like sink boreholes, things like whatever that will touch the lives of people. Staff will be encouraged to volunteer, maybe to teach young people who are not doing well in maths and English, and the staff who can have that capacity, children from the neighborhood can be brought into the factory premises, business premises, and they are taught maths and English for two years before their certificate exams and if they do well, that's the gospel exploding in that land. 4.8, subject to some great profits, kingdom businesses will make valid decisions that rather than paying huge taxes to governments, part of their earnings will be invested in building things like hospitals, health centers, youth centers. As long as it's within the tax, because most tax authorities allow that anything you can do to touch lives of the community is tax exempt. So they do it. Number nine, 4.9. To channel these projects, successful kingdom businesses will be encouraged to set up well structured foundations and non profits through which they will channel these things. So a business starts a foundation and the investments are made to the foundation. It has the books kept clear, transparent, everything is above board. Tax authorities can come anytime and see what is being done with the resources. So that leads us to five. Kingdom business, therefore, will see themselves as embassies of the kingdom. The factory, the business run in this way is automatically an embassy of the kingdom in its neighborhood. It's a beacon of light. It's a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. It's a salt that touches the environment and flavors it. And so, brothers and sisters, what it really means is that based on the depth of what the Lord has been releasing, we believe the time has come to build a global kingdom business school. That world is it, not going to run like an academic academy. No, it's going to be a place where 
the truth in the Bible can be distilled by a global faculty, brothers and sisters, who are in different sectors, who have the competence, and they will teach those who need to prepare to serve the Lord through the marketplace. And so we, we think that through the TTF process that been identified, it will be done, you know, the, the Global Advanced Mentorship Program, the Global School of Missing and International Research Fellowship, there can be a case for a, a, a pooling resources from Greece to deliver the Kingdom Business School. And those who graduate and maintain fellowship with, it, with IMF International Research Fellowship will have their licenses presented to them. And they will be part of the, internet, the business, professional, and public affairs directorate of the fellowship at the global and the local level. Well, sisters, can you imagine that now they have Islamic banking and Islamic economic principles, they have Chinese banking and economic principles, you have the various people groups, Jews, all, they have systems that take care of what they believe in. It's only the kingdom that these things are not done. I think that, yes, the Lord is coming soon. That as part of that preparation of the church for perfection, these things need to come into place. And if you are watching and you feel a staring, you are called to the marketplace, get in touch, send an email to Visionary Mail 7. Visionary, small, you know, lower case, then the numeral 7 at gmail.com. Let us know. Express your interest, whichever way, let's have dialogue and see what can be done. So, brothers, I want to share this video and encourage others to, you know, get these things. Let there be conversations about these things. Ask questions. Think about it. If um, a lot of you are interested, we can have a Zoom meeting and discuss further, but basically share the video in groups, share it to individuals, and the Lord will bless you. By way of assignment, number one, make the case for kingdom entrepreneurship based on what you have learned so far. Two, why is it necessary to start now to create businesses which run entirely on kingdom principles? Three, please summarize the mandate of kingdom entrepreneurs and enterprises. Four, do you feel led to enroll in the global kingdom business school? Send us an email to that effect, as you said, visionarymail7 at gmail.com. And let's see what can be done, whether it's going to be a 90-day project or a 100-day project or whatever period of time, one 80-day project. we we'll look at what the Lord will say. and we'll put it all together and we can have it. It's time to pray. After prayer, we'll now make a short announcement. Father in heaven, let your name be glorified. You are worthy. You are worthy of our praise, of our adoration. We exalt your holy name. Have your way, O oh God. Glorify yourself that Yeshua be lifted up and draw all men to himself by your spirit. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time, and that's the same at Nigerian time, and you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday, and then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac, to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv 
and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of yeshua jesus is empowered with truth remember it is the teach train equip activate and release paradigm absolutely free of charge have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon